time again with $1,000 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is water. And here's the $50,000. The irrigation system sure will be a godsend for us men. And for the women, too. You should be very proud of your father, Marge, for having sponsored the water project. It will develop the entire valley. Well, Tom, in a year we'll control the whole valley and we'll set up our own water project. Water is power, and the public be damned. Think we're kidding? We'll give you the factual evidence about the murky, shady, greedy things that are going on, and you decide for yourself. This is a video in four parts, four quadrants of darkness. If you care about protecting public resources like water, or the habitat that wild California king salmon require to thrive, that you will realize that any one of these stories is disturbing by itself. Looked at as a whole, an alarming picture emerges. It's a picture of a concerted effort to move a precious, limited resource, water, away from public ownership and into the private world of a few wealthy individuals and corporations. tell this story, we start among the palm trees of Beverly Hills. The home to Stuart and Linda Resnick. As we dedicate this building home to three different hospitals and the Stewart and Linda Resnick Neuropsychiatric Hospital. Mr. Resnick is a Beverly Hills billionaire who is well known for his philanthropic giving. Many people have benefited from his generous gifts. Clearly, his is a giving soul. He's given $55 million to the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, millions more for a psychiatric hospital at UCLA and an energy institute at Caltech. But away from that goodness and light is a methodic, strategic use of his wealth designed to ensure that his political interests are properly lubricated. A look at the public record of his campaign donations suggests not an ideology-driven gift-giving scheme, but instead a thoughtful understanding that politicians and regulators change. So anyone who might be in a position to be helpful with his business problems seems to get a Resnick donation a profit-driven side that some may say is more darkness than light. Mr. Resnick's business is called Roll International. It is a holding company operating lots of businesses including Teleflora, the florist wire service, Palm Wonderful pomegranate juice, and Fiji bottled water imported from the South Seas. But it is agriculture that is the main underpinning of the Resnick Empire. Bought a pistachio farm, and then uh, on the pistachio farm were a lot, a lot of pomegranate trees. Um, well, there were about a hundred acres. Oh, that's a lot. And uh, it was then. Yeah. It was a lot. And uh, the farmer said, "Let's pull it." And the steward said, "That's my husband, the visionary." And he said, "Let's see how they do." Paramount Farms is not, by any definition, a small family farm. They have 70,000 acres of pistachios and almonds, 48,000 acres of citrus and pomegranates, most of which are planted at the south end of the San Joaquin Valley. Obviously, all that production requires lots of water. Their water comes from two principal sources, an underground aquifer and Northern California water pumped south via the California aqueduct. California's $2 billion wild salmon industry is getting some long-awaited help from the federal government. It comes in the form of a biological opinion study. It's a legally meaningful word, means it will, it jeopardizes the species with extinction. 
When federal scientists reported that salmon were in jeopardy of becoming extinct because not enough fresh water was flowing through the delta, and that meant reducing the amount of water moving south, Mr. Resnick was not happy. So he dashed off a letter to his friend and recipient of thousands of dollars in campaign contributions, Senator Dianne Feinstein, to do something about it. He decried what he called the sloppy science that resulted in reductions of fresh water being moved south to his farms and urged the senior senator of California to push the Obama administration to conduct a scientific review of the government's biological opinions. He even laid out a specific strategy for how that review should be carried out. This cozy relationship between Senator Feinstein and Mr. Resnick cost you, the American taxpayer, nearly a million dollars, the cost of the National Academy of Sciences' review of the science. And guess what? The National Academy of Sciences says federal actions keeping water from Westside farmers were scientifically justified. A Congress had requested this review. The result of the review clearly stated that the biological opinions that Mr. Resnick declared to be sloppy science were determined to have been scientifically justified. In other words, put in lawyers' terms, the burden of proof was on those who thought the thoroughly peer-reviewed biops were sloppy science, and the sloppy science crowd didn't meet that burden. Now, there's nothing illegal about any of this. Since Mr. Resnick has the money and powerful politicians eager to answer his phone calls, what else would you expect? Especially since his Paramount Farms business has to have unlimited amounts of water to be productive.